Hey everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and look at this gorgeous view today. I thought it would be the perfect time to share with you one of my favorite stitches, which is the long wave. This is a really easy stitch to master. I'm going to share a couple of tips and tricks that make it even easier so you're always on target with this. I'm also going to share how to transition colors, change colors very easily. For example, here with the, uh, where I try to make it look a little bit like white caps on the top of the waves. Then we're gonna dabble a little bit with surface crochet and I'm going to share a pattern on how to make this cute little starfish. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's go ahead and play some hooky. Now, if you're interested in doing this square, as you see it here, the gauge and measurements for this was, it was the start of a chain 30. So this is a um, about seven by seven measurement. And they turned out to be, I'm using Stylecraft Special DK yarn for this. Uh, that is the equivalent to a sport weight and the hook size that I used for that was a 3.75 millimeter. Okay, measurement tips. Now this is going to really make this easy and uh, simple to figure out and fun. The main number that you need to remember for this is 14. Depending on how many waves you want on your uh, project, just uh, count 14 per wave plus two. Uh, for this uh, swatch here, I decided I wanted to have two waves. So that was 14 plus 14 plus two, and that came out to uh, 30. Let's say, for example, I wanted to make it longer with three waves, 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus two. You do not need to add two per wave, just at the very end of your wave count. Okay, here's the tip that I really want you to remember because this helped me so much and I hope it will help you too. You want to remember the rule of two and two. And what I mean by that is as you're building your waves, when you begin the wave, let's say with the short par portion of the wave, you're going to start with two single crochets and you're going to end with two single crochets. When we're working on the waves that begin with the triple crochets, you want to make sure that you have two triple crochets on the front and two triple crochets on the end. This way you know you're on target if you get to the end of the round and you don't end up with two of whatever that row is indicating, then you need to go back and see where maybe you skipped a stitch. Okay, so to get started with this project, we're going to start with a chain of 30. That's because I am doing two waves in this square and that is a multiple of 14 per wave plus two. two. If you're following along to do this pattern here, starting in the second chain from the hook, do half double crochets all the way along. Okay, at this point, make sure that you have 30, and now we're ready for round two. When you get to the end of this, just go ahead and chain one and turn your work. Great, now we're ready for the fun stuff. We're going to begin our wave. Now, if you were making a blanket and you are not working on this project, what you would have done is you would have done your chain of 30 and then you would have started on the second chain from the hook, like we did for the half double crochets, but instead you would have started your wave here. So if you're following along and just learning the wave stitch itself, uh, chain 30, skip to the second chain from your hook, and now begin with our sequence here. What we're going to do is uh, 14 stitches to build our first wave. So we're beginning small and building up. Okay, we've chained one. We're going to begin with a single crochet. Another single crochet. Now we're going to build two half double crochets in the next two stitches. 
one. Two. Now we're going to do two double crochets in the next two stitches. One. Two. Now we're going to do three treble crochets or three triple crochets in the next three stitches. One. Two. Three. So you've done the first half of your wave. Now we're working our way down. So we're going to do two double crochets in the next two stitches. One. Two. Now two half double crochets in the next two stitches. One, two. Now two single crochets in the next two stitches and this will be the end of our wave, our first wave. Great. Now what we're doing next is since we are continuing on with our wave and building. We're not going to do another two to begin. We're continuing on with that second uh, single crochet. We're going to count that towards our next wave. So we need to do one more single crochet. Now we build up again, two half double crochets. One, two, two double crochets, there we go, now we're on to three treble crochets. One, three. Now we're moving back down. So it's two double crochets. One, two, two half double crochets, one, two, and now two single crochets. And this is how you know that you're on track. If you do not end with the magic number of two with whatever you started for that row, you need to go back and see which stitch you missed. We look like we are okay there. So one and two. Go ahead and chain one and turn your work. We've chained one and flipped our work and now we're going to do single crochets all the way around to the other end. And that is it. This just gives a little bit added security on your row here. And this is also ideal if you want to use a contrasting color for this row. 
Be sure you get in this very first stitch here close to your hook and single crochet all the way down. We are finishing our last single crochet of this row. We're getting ready to work on our next wave and because we started with a short wave or the shorter side of the wave first, now we need to make it balanced and we're going to start with the longer portion of the wave for this next round. And that is why we're doing a chain of three. And that is going to serve as your first treble crochet. Now I know typically that would be a chain four, but I've just found that the three for some reason just fits better. You can experiment with both. There's no right or wrong with this. I just prefer doing a chain of three instead for this particular pattern. Now remember we did the rule of two and two. This is what you need to remember here as well. We're doing the chain three to serve as your first treble crochet. Now in the next stitch, we're going to do another treble crochet. And now we're going to work with the same sequence as we were with the first wave. Just go back to your order of stitches and we know that we are going to work our way down. So we need to do two double crochets. Next, two half double crochets. one and two. Now two single crochets, one and two. And now we're getting ready to do a full wave. So remember here, we don't have to do two single crochets here. We just need to do one because we're using the single crochet from the previous wave sequence to get started on our next wave. So you'll have three single crochets. Now two half double crochets. One, two, two double crochets. One and two. And now three big guys, three trebles, one, two, and three. And at this point, you can kind of eyeball it and see if you're on target here. You want your tallest uh, stitches to be right in line with your shortest ones from the previous wave. This is a little bit hard to see because you know you did your single crochet in between, but you can kind of guesstimate and see that you're on target. Two double crochets. two half double crochets, two single crochets, and now we're building again. And so we do one more single crochet because we're rebuilding. two half double crochets, two doubles, now here we go. Are we on target? Yes, we are because now we're finishing with two treble crochets. Remember that is our key to know we're on track, two and two. One, 
and two. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so now we just need to go back down this side with single crochet. So go ahead and chain one and turn your work. This does not count as a stitch. This just helps you to turn. And we're going to go in that same stitch from the beginning and start going back down with our single crochets. Okay, we're getting ready to transition to another color and I've grabbed my dark blue for my waves. And you have two options here. You can either just fasten off here and continue on with your next color. Just fasten on, chain one, and turn your work. Or you can do this. You can just backtrack a little bit here. Go back to where you had two loops on your hook. Okay, you have your two loops on your hook. Pick up the next color that you want to use and pull that through instead of the original piece. Now this may be a little fiddly to you. You do not have to do this. I just want to show you in case that interests you. Chain one and turn your work. Now remember we're working again on the short wave, starting with the shorter portion of the wave. So the chain one does not count as that first single crochet. We're just using that here to give us some wiggle room. In that very first stitch there, we are going to do our first single crochet. And then our second in the next stitch. Begin our sequence. We're doing two half doubles. Two double crochets. And then our three trebles. And we just continue as we've been doing, and I'll meet you at the other end. I'm at the end of my row here, and I'm getting ready to do my two final single crochets. And I just wanted to show you uh, something to keep in mind here, because here we're dealing with one of the uh, treble crochets here is a chain of three. Remember, we did that to start. So the first space to do my single crochet is pretty easy to see. It's easy to ignore this and forget to actually put a stitch here. So just remember to put a stitch in the top of that in your third chain there to keep your count on point. Now it's time to transition color again. If you're wanting to do the white caps like I did in the pattern here, uh, you can either fasten off here and just fasten back on with uh, your white cap color or you can transition with me here. Choose your next color. I've got the duck egg blue here and I'm just going to pull it through. Now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our dark blue color, our wave color, and we're going to pull it along or carry it along as we do our single crochets along the top of this wave. What I like to do is I just like to take the color I'm going to carry and keep it close to the work here with my forefinger. That way I always have an eye on it. I can make sure that it's not getting forgotten. Okay. Remember we are not using that chain one as the first single crochet. That was just there to help us turn. And now we're going to go into that first stitch. and single crochet. And see here I have it, uh, the yarn just sort of pinned between the work and my forefinger. And I'm not holding this hard, I'm just, it's just there very loosely. 
Okay, and we just continue on. And like I said, if you don't like the idea of this, if it's too fiddly, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Okay, I'm on my last single crochet and we're going to transition color again. Okay, so I have my two loops on my hook. I'm going to drop the light blue and I'm going to pull up the wave color blue and finish that stitch. And now I'm ready to chain one Actually, we're getting ready to do the big stitch, so let's chain three. That's going to serve as our first treble crochet. Now change, turn our work. Okay, so I've chained three. I've turned my work. Remember the chain three here serves as your first treble crochet, so you don't want to work in that same stitch. You want to move to the second stitch to do your next treble. Remember we're doing two trebles to start this row. Now two double crochets. Oop, make sure I'm carrying that yarn. I'm at the end of my row here and I see I have my two spaces for my last two trebles. I'm on track and here we go, making sure to carry the yarn. And there we go. Now I'm going to continue on. I'm going to then again do like we did before. I'm going to carry the blue along because I'm getting ready to do the single crochet white caps here. Uh, let me just show you here what we've got so far. We've done two waves with one, one white cap. So we're getting ready to do another white cap wave, white cap, wave, white cap. Okay, so I've just completed my single crochet row of white caps and instead of continuing on, because I think you get the idea, uh, I'm going to go ahead and transition to the sky blue color now just so you can see that as well. Very simple. I'm just going to go ahead and backtrack here like before. And again, you do not have to do it this way. You can just fasten off and then just join your next color. But I'm going to do it this way. Whoops. And then chain one and turn. Now at this point you can clip all these other pieces of yarn off because you're done with all of those colors. And you're just going to continue on as we have before. We're going to start with our first two single crochets. We're starting on the short end of the wave. Then we're going to do our single crochet row in the same color because we're not trying to make it noticeable this time and then the big wave and then continue on. We're going to do one, two, three, four, four waves. So two short wave beginnings and two long wave beginnings. What I do want to show you is when you have reached the amount of waves that you want, uh, then we're going to go back to the half double crochet like we did in the very beginning. That is how I finished off this pattern. So once you're to that point, chain one, turn your work, and then just follow through with half double crochets all the way along in that uh, single crochet stitch.
And there we go. We finished our half double crochet row and we are good to go. We are finished with the square. All that's left to do is just create a border on here. And I just did it with uh, single crochets all the way around with a, in the corners I did a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and then single crochets all along the side in the bottom and all the way around. So what we are going to do is use the stitches here on our uh, square here to be our guide because it's kind of hard to to make any kind of marks. I mean you could do it of course with some stitch markers and things. There are some techniques to to help but we're just going to use the stitches that we have here to be our guide. We're going to be doing three chains one chain for the V, another chain for the other V, and then three more chains. Now the slip knot that we have on our hook, go ahead and remove it. Decide where you want to work your seagull. And this may take a couple of passes. It does take some practice, but it's not a big deal. Just play with it. You're going to, you've placed your hook through the work and now you're going to reattach your slip knot and pull it through. You're just doing this so that you can get your knot and your ends in the back. Okay, so now we are going to be working with this yarn. Go ahead and feed it around your fingers. And we're just going to use these holes as our guide. You're going to go through your work. You're going to pull yarn over and pull your yarn through that hole and do a slip stitch. That's your first chain. We're going to go into the second hole and do the same thing. Go through, pull, yarn over and pull, two. I'm going to use the third hole Go through, yarn over and pull it through, three. Okay, so now we're ready to do the body. And as you can see, we have a natural kind of area here to get that V happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this space here. Now, it, it, there is a tendency for this to kind of get tight, so try to be relaxed when you do this. Okay, pulling through, just try to catch it. There we go, good. And now we're going to go right here for the next. There's our second V. And now I'm going to go back up to one, two, three, for the rest of my seagull, the second wing. Pulling through, one, two, and we have a little space there. Three. Beautiful. And so at this point, I just go ahead and I snip my yarn. And I'm going to take that piece and I'm just going to catch it. And pull it back. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just, to darn that in, I'll just kind of go over the top just to keep it kind of neat, you know, uh, just so it's not too, too much of an eyesore when uh, you look at both sides. Ready to make a starfish? Me too. So we're going to start with a magic circle or magic ring, however you want to call it. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with that, I do have a video 
on how to do this and I try to make it as easy as possible. But this is the uh, magic circle or magic ring. We're going to now make 10 single crochets. One. Three and 10. Great, so we just tighten our little center here to form our circle. Don't clip this off. Wait till the very end to darn that in. I found that no matter what I do, that does un come undone if I uh, do it too early. Slip stitch here in the first chain and you've formed the body of your starfish. Okay, go ahead and chain four. One, two, three, four. You're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Okay, next we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. And then a half double crochet in the final stitch there. Okay. Go ahead and slip stitch into the next chain space. And that will secure your first leg. Neat, huh? Okay, so now go ahead and slip stitch into the next chain and repeat the process. And you're just going to do that all the way around. We're at the end here and I'm doing my final slip stitch. Now what you want to do is you want to give yourself a nice long tail here because that's what you're going to use to darn in your, your starfish to your piece. And there you have your cute little starfish. It's interesting to me that they always come out a little bit different. They get a lot of personality with the little curls. Even though you do everything you think the same, they come out a little bit different. I would go ahead and darn in the center tail at this point uh, and use this one here to tack it onto your piece. And that's very simple. Just do it however you feel. You may like the piece or the legs to curl up. I'm not a big fan of that myself, so I made sure you can't see it on the back side because I went on the top surface of the stitches to tack it on, but I just went up to I just went through the center when I tagged it on. I didn't do it on the edges. I just went and attached this through the center and then just the top layer of the uh, stitches here. I really do hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Uh, it was a lot of fun to design for you guys. Uh, I do have some more videos that you may be interested in. Please check those out here at the end. Otherwise, uh, thanks for playing hooky with me and we'll see you again soon.